Oh. Yeah, it's coming out right in front of my face. Okay. Whoa, a bitch is black. I keep forgetting every time I like open up the camera or see myself in a mirror, I'm like, who dat? Anyways, hey guys, and welcome to the vlog. So normally I know we usually do like a whole weekly thing, but I'm not gonna lie, this past weekend, I haven't been feeling too great. Essentially, I've been having digestion problems, so I'm now kind of on this like loose diet. I don't wanna say that I'm on a diet. Basically, I'm taking out a few things from my diet to try and figure out what's making my stomach hurt so bad and what's making me bloated. I just like didn't realize that every meal's not supposed to make your stomach hurt. <laughs> I don't know how I went 26 years, uh, uh, not knowing this, but apparently that's not a normal thing. Anyways, I have a pair of Vans that are like half taped up right now in my size that were left over from a past DIY that you guys will see soon on IGTV. But I figured since I still had all the materials and a blank canvas of Vans, I would try to do another Hydro Dip video because now I've Hydro Dip officially twice. This will be my third time. I think now at this point in my Hydro Dipping career, I'm ready for the big league essentially but I figured that I would answer some questions do a little Q&A while I finish taping these up and then we can go round three hydro dipping some vans because the ones that I made with a fan for this IGTV video that's coming up turned out so freaking good and honestly I left that video pretty jealous so I'm gonna make myself my own pair because we were making a pair for her and she obviously got to keep them anyways I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Twitter and Insta stories so I'm gonna be just chatting with you guys while I finish taping these up okay so the first question Question, and I got a lot of these questions. Have you decided if you're adopting one of Joey's puppies yet? <gasps> This topic honestly makes me so sad because the answer is no. We're not gonna be adopting one of the puppies. They were honestly so sweet and we went and met some of them and started learning about their personalities and like started prepping for what life would actually look like if we were to adopt one of them. But the main deciding factor on our end is that Jeremy works from home right now, which is like our home. I'm not entirely sure how long he'll be at this job for, not to say that he's quitting anytime soon, but if he were to work a regular nine to five in an office, within the first like seven months of the puppy's life. That's a lot of work on my end to handle two dogs on top of my regular workload with everything that I do at home. So that was kind of our deciding factor and we decided that it's probably not the right time because everyone always says that going from one to two dogs is the biggest change that you can do. Like going from two to three is like, obviously you're getting another dog, but everyone says that the change between one and two is kind of the biggest. And I don't know if we're ready. I want to be ready so bad, but I want to give this dog like the best life possible and I don't want to get another one until we're 110% ready and I feel like I'm not quite there yet. No brother or sister for Moose Moose right now but I mean Moose lives such a good life and we spend so much time with him and he's obviously mature and grown now as to where he can just hang out in the house when we're not here. He's got a lot of freedom, a ton of toys, take him on hikes and go to doggo parties. So he's got a good life right now. I think it just makes the most sense as a responsible dog owner to just have one. Trust me. The puppy comes content would have been fire but i think being a responsible dog owner comes first obviously that's the final decision okay next question is any new products coming up for the holiday time there is so much sick merch stuff launching for the holiday season i wanted to do a few custom pieces that aren't just like hoodies and t-shirts and those take a decent amount of time because you have to custom make like the actual base piece so there's going to be a really sick flannel because you guys know I love flannel. There's a super cute little backpack that's coming out. Oh my gosh, guys, like the holiday collection is sick. There's actually a necklace too that's gonna come in silver and gold. We've been working on these pieces for so freaking long and they're finally coming out and I'm so excited. So I think it's gonna be end of November. We'll be launching all the holiday stuff to make sure you guys can grab it in time for Christmas. So probably like Black Friday sale, definitely expect that to be happening and that to be like a big thing. And then we'll launch a whole bunch of good stuff for the holiday. Holidays. Next question, worst fashion look you ever had? I don't know. I feel like in the 2000s, there are definitely some questionable things that I did. I would say one of the ones I look back on the most, and I'm like, why were we all doing this, was leggings under dresses. That was a weird thing that like had a moment that was really not cute whatsoever. Leggings under dresses, and also the amount of things that were low rise and so trendy. Oh 
my gosh like let me hide my bloated stomach in peace please <laughs> like if low rise ever comes back i'll actually die a high rise is everything like the fact that athleisure and high rise are both really popular is my lord and saving grace and i need to stay like that until i get my diet and my food intolerances or whatever is happening with my stomach under control i need high-waisted stuff to stay in style even if low rise comes back in style i will just not be joining that trend i think what was your favorite thing about living in toronto so obviously aside from having all of my friends and family so close I miss a lot of the food in Toronto Toronto has some bomb food And I also miss how there was like really cool little pockets of different cultures and different like neighborhoods in Toronto There was one really cool area called Kensington Market Which was so like boho and vintage and it was like the coolest little area And it did not feel like you were in a massive city by any means And then you could go like 10 minutes down the street and be in like a really cool urban urban area with like fun restaurants and bars and it was just like 10 minutes away in each direction was a new neighborhood and a new culture and I miss that so much in Toronto. Okay, my battery just super died so if the frame looks a little bit different, that is why. If you were to give your money to charity, who will you donate it to? So I actually do a bunch of charity stuff just like offline. I've always kind of felt weird about doing big time charity stuff on video because it kind of, I don't know, it just like feels weird to me. It just like feels like a little icky. Anyways, we actually raised $10,000 for Girls Inc, which is this amazing organization which helped put structure into classrooms and different communities for teaching young girls how to basically be like a boss ass beach. And it just teaches you all the fundamentals about being independent and strong and it's something that I really, really love what they do. And yeah, you guys were also a part of that and helped raise that money if you were supporting through the Pop Sockets campaign that we did not too long ago. But yeah, that was $10,000 that we kind of just like raised in quiet, I guess. I don't know. No, I, I donate a lot to that and then um, my mom works for a whole bunch of community stuff in our hometown and I donate every year to those programs which help support um, like food programs and programs for new families and the homeless in my hometown. Again, nothing wrong with doing charity work on videos. I like to just kind of keep it an offline thing. Lauren, would you see yourself with a kid in five to ten years? Uh, I think if I don't answer yes to this, my mom will probably get on a plane, show up in LA and kill me because mom DIY is itching for some grandchildren, but she knows that it's like not a realistic thing for minimum five years. So, I mean, but yeah, honestly, probably like four years minimum, probably five, maybe six. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God. I can already see the angry text that I'm going to receive from my mom when she sees this segment of the vlog. Hey ma'am. Oh, I need to put the shoe down for this question. Miss your old DIY videos. What happened to the quality? Nose blow emoji. I am a little insulted because I literally try so hard to up the quality on every single video that comes out. So it's like my intention is for every new video to be better than the last. Like obviously there's a few standouts from my past that have just been, you know, like next, next level. I'm kind of confused by this question because I started doing DIYs eight years ago and here I am literally eight years later still doing DIYs. Like are they a little more chatty? Are they a little more personality driven? Because that's what you guys asked for. Absolutely. I think if you go back and look at my old videos, they're so dry and robotic and just like there's no life in it Anyone could do a DIY tutorial where they cut up some jeans and just like slap them on for some cute b-roll and that's it That is not good quality content I try so hard to make content that's entertaining for you guys whether or not you want to do the DIY So like hopefully in this video You'll be super stoked about the outcome of these shoes and the anticipation when we do that really scary portion Where you dip it in the water and pull it out and you're like, oh my god, it looks really cool Which will be happening by the end of this vlog but my goal is that it's entertaining for people who are going to make the DIY and for people who aren't gonna make the DIY. My camera equipment's only gotten better. My lighting's only gotten better. The DIYs in my opinion have only gotten a little better. <laughs> so uh that's my response to that I guess. We got one shoe completely done. Honestly it looks kind of cool the way it is because the duct tape that I use but it's about to be even cooler. And I think I've got two more questions left and I've got like a couple more things to tape out on the little sushi on the van. 
friends. Next question, how does your boyfriend help you cope with anxiety and to what extent do you think significant others should support people with mental health? This is such a good question and I feel like it's so interesting. For me personally, and I just wanna start by saying that I think this is something that is so particular and individual to you and your relationship with your significant other. Personally, if I'm having an anxiety attack, I feel the best and feel safest when my significant other knows what to do and what things are gonna help calm me down. I think the first step to being super comfortable with talking about your mental health with your significant other is just helping them understand what your triggers are, things that they can do, things that you need to do if you need to, you know, suddenly leave a room with no explanation why that might happen sometime and just how your body reacts and what they can do to help and be the biggest support that they can be. There's nothing worse than feeling alone during an anxiety attack and I think it's really important that your significant other understands understands that or understands that you maybe do need to be alone and that's what you need to feel better but personally if i'm having an anxiety attack jeremy knows exactly what to do what i need what i need from him and i think just having someone on your team while you're going through that can just a mean the world to you and b help you you know ground yourself and not come back down to earth but you know come out of the anxiety attack or however you're feeling and last question how has it been living with jeremy you guys look so happy honestly i love it how you're glowing Ooh. Oh, thank you. It's that Manny MUA highlighter girl. And also just like being really happy. And no, yeah, it's been going super, super good. I've never lived with a significant other before. So this is a first for me as well. And I feel like we just like gradually stayed together more and more. So there wasn't like a big specific day where we're like, oh my gosh, okay, like this is it. We just ended up staying together for like a couple months consecutively. And we're like, okay, yeah, this probably makes sense to just like do this permanently. So yeah, it's been going so, so, so good. I think living with someone is a massive step. It really helps you to learn if you're compatible on the next level with your significant other. Okay, so I am going to wrap up the Q&A section, finish up this last little swoosh, and then we are ready to hydro dip. I'm so excited. We're gonna do blues and aquas, so see you in a sec. Okay, because I'm an irresponsible crafter and it's 95 degrees outside, we're doing this inside, so I'm gonna try and like contain the fumes. I've never done this before. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, and then I'll air, but I just feel like last time, the heat of it being out outside made my layer of spray paint dry so quickly and we know about that i think i did too much spray paint last time and it was too hot this works this is gonna change my life oh yeah it's coming out right in front of my face okay Ugh. it looks so sick though oh my god i'm covered in spray paint i'm like also alarmed by how much fumes i realize are now coming out of everything but that worked so well i'm definitely inhaling a lot of stuff on this end but it's fine it's totally fine Ugh, i just saw it okay Blech. wow this looks so good though ah! one two just like add some more spray paint in and go again. There's definitely so many fumes. This is not helping my stomach juice. I know this is not what you're supposed to do, but like we're gonna try it anyway. <laughs> oh, so many fumes. Okay. One, two. Oh my God, I almost dropped the whole thing. Okay. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Okay, we need to vacate this room immediately and go breathe some real air, okay. We are laced and pretty much dry, honestly. Dude, they look so good. Especially for not completely following the rules because I was scared of the spray paint inhalation that I might suffer from. They look pretty good. I'm stoked about it. So I'm gonna let these dry and then add a clear coat of the sealant spray afterwards. Probably should have waited to put the laces on first. But anyways, that's the final step once they fully dry. So if you guys ever try this out, please send me photos. This was so much fun. I feel like in true sneaker head fashion insert final shoe montage here <laughs> you guys 
guys enjoyed this vlog. This is more of like a super chill DIY, I feel like. Just me and the cam for the most part. Hopefully we'll be back to regular vlogging next week. Dude, like I am so sick of feeling sick. So please let me know if you've tried the low FODMAP diet because I'm about to go ham with it because I am so annoyed with my body right now. This like hasn't been a problem my entire life. So like, I don't really know what's going on and what's changed, but yay, growing up. Oh my gosh, okay, so for the last video of Halloween, I attempted a spooky makeup look based on a look that one of your faves have done on another one of your faves, my faves as well. But that is the last video of the Halloween series, so that's coming on Sunday, so get excited for that. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will see you guys on Sunday for a Sunday DIY, and again, I will see you for another weekly vlog. Okay, bye guys, love you. My pretty little kingdom, now you're running the